was hidden away for a few decades which is wild considering she was created to shine. The powerhouse superstar mutant was a big character when she first came out in the late 1970s, but she was heavily based on disco fever, so when disco started to die, so did Dazzler's popularity. Her mutant ability is sound conversion, she turns the sonic vibrations of sound into light. She dated Beast for a minute there in the Beauty and the Beast series, Dazzler and Beast ended things eventually and Dazzler's personal series that ran in the 80s ended with her being asked by Beast if she wanted to join the X-Men. Then we didn't get an official answer until a few decades later, seriously. Luckily, Dazzler had a super fan in the form of Jim McCann and he wrote the ending to that cliffhanger in 2010. In recent years, Dazzler has started to regain her popularity for a few different reasons. One big one is some people currently writing for Marvel are Dazzler fans, so she is starting to get worked back into lead roles. But more recently, it was announced Dazzler was going to be getting her own limited series coming out in September as part of Marvel's From the Ashes era. Glazier has a power no one would want to have that she claims she gained out of heartbreak. Not much is known about her, she has only appeared the one time. Bruce Banner had passed out on a beach that was close to where Glazier lived and she ended up bringing him to her house made of glass to care for him. Glazier is completely white with white hair, white outfit, white gloves, white skin and she claims she turned into this version of herself after her heart was broken. It isn't until a month into Bruce's stay that he, and we, discover that Glazier's arms are really crystal that turns whatever they touch to glass. It's very like Disney's frozen core. So all these glass statues in her house, those were actually former lovers. So Bruce needs to get out of there. To escape, he turns into the Hulk and the weight of him causes the glass house to shatter. In the mess of it all, Glazier ends up touching her own body with her hands and turning herself to glass. You kind of feel for her because of the whole like so heartbroken she gained a terrible ability thing, but then she did kidnap a bunch of people for a creepy glass collection. Linda Page dated Bruce Wayne and that came with every problem you'd expect. She had to deal with being kidnapped and seeing Bruce's random injuries and even having her wedding interrupted by criminals. She was the daughter of a Texas oil baron. She could have chosen to be a Nepo baby that never works, but instead she decided to become a nurse and work with the elderly. She met Bruce because they ran in the same social circles. She didn't know he was Batman and yet she still got the Bat girlfriend treatment. She was kidnapped by a mob and then another criminal kidnapped her and then she had a run in with criminal Mr. Baffle and then she was a guest attacked at a fashion show. So much happened to this poor girl. She also had to deal with Bruce like randomly disappearing on dates to go fight crime. And early comic Bruce Wayne wasn't known for his subtle escapes. In Detective Comics 69, Linda and Bruce are on a carnival ride that gets stuck in the air. But as they are waiting to be saved, the bat signal goes off. Bruce's only option here is to obviously stage a fall from like 100 feet up. The readers obviously know that Bruce was fine, but poor Linda. Linda eventually moved on from Batman and married this other guy, but then her wedding was interrupted by Scarecrow, so even after leaving Bruce, she is still haunted by her time with him. Deborah Whitman has had a rough time in the relationships department. She dated Peter Parker, which unfortunately means she was guaranteed to go through something traumatic. But even before dating Peter, she was having a rough go in her romantic life. She did have a husband, but he was not very nice to her at all. That situation, plus past trauma, led to Deborah suffering from mental instability. When she was dating Peter, she started picking up clues that something was up with Peter. She started believing he was Spider-Man. She thought it was just a hallucination. We know it wasn't, but Peter let Deborah believe that she was losing it, which isn't very nice. He did help her finally leave her mean husband by confessing he was Spider-Man to like shock her system. Deborah then went on to write a book about her experience. Truly, I hope Deb is doing okay and never sees Spider-Man again. Dazzler performed with her and Cannonball dated her. Lila Chenney was a 1980s British rock star that, like Dazzler, fell into obscurity just a few years after her debut. Having a superstar girlfriend seemed to be all the rage in the 80s. Cannonball and Lila were in an on again, off again couple, so they were kind of like hard to keep up with. Cannonball is more well known than Lila. He is on the X Men and was recently resurrected. Lila just didn't pick up steam in the same way. In addition to her heroics, she does have some villain tendencies, so maybe people didn't take to that. Lila is capable of intergalactic teleportation, but it has drawbacks. She has to travel hundreds of miles at a time. Her powers work so fast. But by the time they are activated, she's already moved miles away. To sort of like fix this problem, she always transports herself to her hideout called the Dyson Sphere, and then from there transports again to wherever she actually wants to go. Lila also has to know 
know where she wants to teleport to or it has to be somewhere that she has been or her voice has been. For a singer, that can get messy pretty fast. Captain Marvel has proven to be a fan of Lila because Lila once transported herself to Captain Marvel's ship when Carol was playing her tracks. Richard Malvern is known for dating Linda Danvers or Supergirl. Him and Linda were in the same orphanage as a kid, so he's an orphan, let's clock that together. He suspected that she was Supergirl, but she kept creating like wild stories to throw him off her scent. He eventually just like gave up. The kids both got adopted, eventually meeting again when they went to the same high school. They dated through high school and college, but then broke up after. Richard of Earth One has appeared about 43 times and probably has limited appearances because he met an early end. He tried seeking Linda out when they were adults, but then he found out he had cancer and it was really bad. Linda eventually was found and visited him in hospital. He was on his deathbed though. They shared a goodbye kiss and he passed in the night. It was a peaceful end in comparison to the others on this list, but still heartbreaking all the same. Clark Kent's amnesia cowboy era was short lived and resulted in more heartbreak than his love interest Sally Selwyn bargained for. Sally Selwyn was minding her business, working on her family ranch alongside her dad. Then one day, as she was just milking the cows, this guy shows up. The guy is Superman, but he has amnesia, so he gets dubbed Jim White. Superman ends up sticking around the farm, and him and Sally fall in love. She seems super sweet, super into Jim. She wanted to marry him. Jim had an accident while on a horse and was in a wheelchair. Then he went to a cliff beside a river to contemplate life, and then this bully showed up and pushed a boulder into the back of his wheelchair, sending Clark Jim into the river. He woke up in Atlantis with his Clark memory restored and no recollection of his time with Sally, so Sally was truly literally forgotten. Sally was very upset about Jim's passing and vowed to never love another. Then Ned Barnes showed up. He had plastic surgery done to look like Superman, so he took on the Jim mantle, but then he also passed shortly after, so poor Sally had to mourn Jim all over again. Hermione Granger almost played Superman's girlfriend. I know, I'm as shocked as you. We all know Gwen Stacy, right? We are all familiar with Spider Man's second most popular love interest ever. Well, she had a cousin. That cousin also dated Peter Parker. Her name was Jill Stacy. Jill was in Peter's life after Gwen passed, and she dated Peter when Mary Jane was believed to have also passed, but when MJ appeared alive, Jill backed off Peter. She was created in the 90s, and I wouldn't call her popular at all, but allegedly, there were plans for Emma Watson to take on the character in the third Amazing Spider Man movie, but we all know what happened there. Every day, I find out something new about the lost Amazing Spider Man movie, and I cry a little inside. Jill in the comics, like most of Peter's girlfriends, has not had an easy run. She was once almost eliminated when Peter's house was attacked by one of Norman's goons. I hope Jill eventually found love and settled down, and that's why we haven't heard from her. From Earth One, we have Mark Hanner. He was involved with Barbara Gordon's Batgirl. Hanner was truly like just your average guy. He worked as a private investigator in Gotham, and okay, that is a pretty dangerous dangerous profession, especially in that city. He would visit the library Barbara worked at at the same time every week, and Barbara developed a little crush. But then one day, Mark didn't show. Barbara got worried and searched for him, only to find out Mark had been kidnapped. Being kidnapped is already bad, but Mark has diabetes, and he was purposefully being separated from his insulin. Barbara does end up saving him as Batgirl, and then bravely faces her crush as Barbara, and the two go on a cute skating date, so Happy ending, but not without a little bit of trauma to get there. Natalia Trusevich dated Bruce Wayne, and he was the last boyfriend she ever had. She was a concert pianist from out of town, and she should have stayed out of town. She met Bruce Wayne, the pair fell in love, but Bruce was too into his work, or at least that's what she thought, and it put a strain on their relationship. Bruce was really into her though, and he didn't subscribe to the if you love someone let them go thing, so he tried winning her back. Alfred gave Bruce a stellar idea to win her favor again, tell her you're Batman. So now Natalia is carrying the weight of that secret. But the worst thing that ever happened to her would have to be when she was kidnapped by the Mad Hatter to be his Alice, and then when she wasn't a good enough Alice, he tried to get Batman's identity out of her by any means necessary, and when she wouldn't give in, he threw her out of a helicopter and she crashed into the bat signal. Could not think of a worse way to go for her. Now they also have to fix the bat signal, and now Batman will be reminded of her every time he sees it. Just a horrible time all around. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make your mark on the comment section down below. Let me know your favorite super love interest. This is Juliana signing off. Bye!